praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> it's uh, good to be back with you this Wednesday night. And uh, we're excited about what the Lord is doing. We're excited about uh, now being in the yellow phase with Pennsylvania. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, starting our opening process. I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I also want to say that my family, I appreciate you allowing us uh, to get away. Uh, we went to Tennessee this past weekend, and uh, which uh, is a state that has uh, probably one-tenth of the trouble with the coronavirus that Pennsylvania had. And so they are, they are a lot farther along in the opening process uh, than what Pennsylvania is. And we were able to eat in restaurants. We were able to shop. Uh, we were able, we were able to live a little bit, and uh, mostly without masks. I, most of the public were were not wearing masks there, and uh, we were just really thankful to be able to get down there. Uh, they were just beginning to open the the hotels. Uh, we stayed in a cabin uh, for four days, and uh, really really had a good time the weather was was perfect uh the lord really helped us blessed us we got uh, we come back I, I feel like we're refreshed and ready to go so i thank you for that i appreciate brother tim uh partika filling in and the team uh the sight and sound team to continue they continue to do a great job and uh he preached uh, a wonderful message on sunday and handled things for us and as always uh everything was great appreciate uh, the faithfulness of the people of God. Uh, <clears throat> here's what is coming up. Uh, this coming Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. It's the last Sunday of May. Uh, we have Brother Bobby Wade coming. Our plans are, and it, the weather looks like it's going to be fantastic, our plans are for this Sunday is to have um, another outside service. This one is going to be over... Uh, on the, the back side of our building, uh, there is a very large garage door type opening on the back side of the youth room. Uh, we are going to open that, Lord willing, and we're going to set up our singing and preaching from that vantage point. Uh, and we are going to allow uh, our folks, uh, any that want to, to set up their uh, lawn chairs in the field out toward the, the shed in the back side uh, of our property over there in back of the building. Uh, we're going to have that whole field available to, uh, uh, to be able to sit in chairs if you would like. Uh, if you want to stay in your car, you can do that. Uh, we will make sure you are parked over there where you can, uh, where you can see and where you can hear. Uh, we are going to aim our our sound uh, up toward uh, the field area uh, more so. We've not been having trouble uh, with anyone uh, over here in this side, but we're gonna we're not going to be on the roof this week. Uh, but we're going to be in a little uh, more user friendly setting over on the back side of the building, and so uh, we will be prepared for you to come. Bring your lawn chairs if you like. Uh, you can wear uh, masks if you want to. Uh, if you do not want to, there will be enough room for you to social distance yourself. Uh, you can you can set your chairs anywhere you want to on that side of the building over there in that field area where we've played softball and other things. And, uh, and we are going to have a tremendous time. This service may last a little longer. Uh, we will uh, have the facilities available to folks uh, and be prepared for you uh, in that manner. Uh, I would imagine Brother Bobby is going to preach a little longer than I have been preaching. I've been trying to make it as user-friendly as possible with folks not having to come in the building. Uh, but we are, we are about ready to uh, enter into what is going to be our Phase 1 operation. Uh, we are going to have uh, the, the church set up and ready to go uh, the week following. We would do it this week if we think it's going to rain uh, and start having service inside. We're hoping to be outside for Pentecost Sunday. Uh, but the following Sunday, we plan on being inside and being ready to go and have our first service inside 
the building. And uh, we're going to have the seating arranged to where uh, every other row is used and available. Uh, family units that live together can sit together. And uh, we are going to try to keep the social distancing uh, set up and proper for you. Um, here's what we are thinking with our phase one. We're going to uh, make sure our bathrooms are disinfected every uh, 30 minutes or so. We're going to... Uh, uh, make sure, as I said, that every other row is blocked off. We're going to have all of our uh, guest connections, people, ushers wearing masks. And uh, so you do not have to touch doors. Uh, you'll be able to, uh, to function in, uh, safely, we believe. Uh, you can wear ma masks here in the sanctuary if you would like. Uh, but you will be social distanced in such a way that if you do not want to wear a mask, you will not have to. Uh, but if you feel safer, uh, you're going to be able to do that. Um, where uh, We've got some other things that uh, we will uh, send out to you and let our leadership know also as well. Uh, for the next uh, few weeks uh, during phase one, we're still not going to have individual ministries doing their individual things yet. Uh, we are actually uh, asking if you're 65 and older, uh, you are welcome, please, to stay home. Uh, for the next few weeks until we get through phase one. Obviously, you can do what you want to do. We're not going to force you to stay home. And obviously, we can't force you to come. We're just making suggestions here, which is what uh, the CDC has made suggestions for churches in their reopening. Uh, I looked over all of those rules. Uh, it's quite a few pages of instructions. We're going to make sure we follow as many of those guidelines as we can. Uh, as we go through the reopening process here. Uh, one of the difficulties we have is that we have a little bit larger uh, church than many of the smaller churches that have been able to open uh, very easily without, uh, without much trouble. Now we do have a large building which is in our favor so we'll be able to, to spread out the seating a little more as people come back to church and to make sure that you can stay socially distant uh, as much as you would like here. Uh, we're uh, also going to uh, uh, make sure that uh, we wear masks when praying for people in the altar. Uh, we will have a specific setup for people that want prayer, that uh, feel like they want someone to lay hands on them. We will have uh, all of the hand sanitizers and, uh, and all of that stuff available. Uh, to to everyone that's involved there, we, we will have particular people that are trained and ready uh, and prepared for that moment. It's not going to be like normal uh, for a while yet as far as in our altars and that kind of thing. And so we will instruct you also when you arrive and get here. And so uh, that is the plan for right now. We have a phase one in, in place. I, I did not give you all the uh, of our phase one instructions, but just kind of giving you a, a, an idea of where we're going from here. This coming Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, Brother Bobby Wade from Texas is going to be here to preach. We're going to have a great time. We're going to set up on the, uh, the far side of the building in the back, uh, in the edge of the field, back of the dumpster, back over uh, behind the shed. All kinds of room there. You'll be able to be safe if you feel like you want to be separate from everybody, but still out in the open. You can. Uh, there's going to be so much room there. You do not have to wear a mask. The following week, which will be the first Sunday of June, I think it's June 7th, uh, that will be our first service inside the building. And we will have all of our ducks in a row, and we will be ready for that service with you. There will be no midweek services yet for this phase one. We will continue to do this online presentation and uh, be meeting with you during the midweek. There are some other special instructions. We want you to continue to also do your Zoom meetings with your, uh, with your home group leader and with your home group team. Uh, we want you to continue to do that during this phase one opening process. And uh, there will be more instructions coming, by the way. And so that is, uh, that is what is coming up. We're excited about it. We're excited, obviously, to be with you and to see you and to, uh, to be able to, uh, you know, get back to some semblance of normalcy. Um, but as I was uh, kind of getting prepared mentally and, and uh, biblically for this 
uh, this Bible study here tonight with you. I started uh, really thinking about, are things going to get back to normal? What is normal? Uh, what used to be normal is that we pretty much did everything inside our building. And we considered being in the church building, uh, being the church. Quite honestly, if we really look at the biblical perception and the biblical teaching concerning what the church is, and what the Lord expects out of what we call the church, um, we may not have been fulfilling what God wanted us to fulfill. Uh, you know, in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said to Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will build my church. Obviously, he was not talking about a building. The church is not a building, as we have discovered. The church is doing well, actually, without the building. The folks are serving God, praying, reading their Bible. We are, we are studying together. We are, we are fellowshipping as we, best we can from a distance without a building. The early church did much of what they did without a building. Of course, Jesus mentions the church there and establishing the church in the Gospels and, and in Matthew chapter 16, but the, the church actually didn't begin until Acts chapter 2, and even then it, was a, it ended up being a street meeting. It ended up being done in public. And it ended up being an outside kind of setting where people that weren't in a building weren't where they gathered together in that upper room. And as it spilled out into the street, it actually accomplished what the Lord wanted it to accomplish by reaching and touching people outside of a building. And, you know, I think what is going to become the new normal is our revelation and our understanding is that much of what we are to do is not in the building but outside the building we come to the house of God and you've heard me mention it many times we come to the house of God to get our marching orders of what to do during the week and and on the job and in our homes and in other settings in reaching other people and uh you know, the Bible says the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. How do you do a daily harvest if you're just inside a building? They did their daily work by touching people's lives outside the building. Outside the building. The Ecclesia. The, the, the Greek word for church was used 114 times in the New Testament. And it meant, really in that society, an assembly of free citizens who were brought out of their homes to assemble together for matters of, of public interest. That's what Ecclesia in those days meant. They were not just called out, and we know that that was part of the Ecclesia. They were called out. We have been called out of darkness into this marvelous light. Not necessarily called out into a building. But we've been called out of darkness into a fellowship of believers, into this glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The light of day, the light of living the good life, the blessed life that we live in, in knowing and serving the Lord. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with a building. And I'm not preaching against buildings, obviously. We're excited about getting our building back and being able to be back inside and fellowshipping with one another. All of that is good and all of that is right. But that is not obviously the focus of the biblical church. 
It wasn't focused on a building. Nowhere in that New Testament do you do you really read or hear of them talking about it. And all of the mention of the 114 times of the Ecclesia, it never does really talk about the building. It's not talking about a building. Talk, it talked about being members of a body. Members of it talked about the value, and this this was the point I really wanted to make in in our connection tonight. and And I've been trying to 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 leave one really good strong point with all of you when we get together on these little Wednesday night meetings. I know that you know folks are not going to sit and look at a video for two or three hours, and so we I've kind of shortened shorten these things on purpose but I I've tried to I've tried to bring some real powerful inspirational word to you so it's worth your time to meet with us and to and to, to come online and to go to our website and to, to to meet together like this but he, he Paul taught us that we were members of a body and that every member is super valuable. Even if it's not highly visible, it's valuable. Your, your big toe is valuable. It helps just keep your balance. Not very visible most of the time. It's, it's valuable. The most valuable parts of your body are, are parts that are not visible. That make you function. Your brain, your heart, your, your liver, your, your insides. We are all valuable to the body and, and members of the body of Jesus Christ have great value. One of the things that I, I, uh, I noticed that was uh, that just kind of caught my attention when you start talking about members, members of the church, members of the kingdom of God. I know a lot of times when we have church, in the building and we're talking about having church and we got a lot of people here there's a difference between attenders those who attend church and those who are really members now I know I know the world has taken membership to the point of where you know you just you get your name on the roll and you show up when you want to and but the Bible in its understanding and in and in it in its teaching to us concerning membership in the kingdom of God, it was there was more to it than that. Attenders are spectators who sit on the sidelines. But members get involved in ministry, and many of you are, and many of you have, and we were we were going to a place at the Pentecostals of York that we had never gone before. We were becoming members and, and involved in, in the process of ministry more than we'd ever had before. We had more folks involved in ministry than ever before at the Pentecostals of York. And we're excited about it. And one of the reasons we're excited to get back is because we know many of you were were involved and you want to be involved and you want to be a blessing and you want to want to get your hands dirty so to speak in the in the ministry of of blessing others and the ministry of the kingdom being used of the Lord wherever you can and many of you were in the process of of getting signed up and getting involved when all of this happened and you've had to you've kind of had to put things on hold and so I I understand that but I want you to understand the difference between a member of the body of Christ and a spectator, somebody who just kind of comes and shows up and sits on the outside. When we get back to the house of God, recognize the biblical understanding of who a member is and what your what your value is to the kingdom of God, where you can put your put your you know your talents to use and and your giftings you use because everybody's got giftings and everybody's got talent. Everybody has has value to add to the kingdom of God. And you want to be a what we we have termed as an active member. An active member. Uh, Brother Woodward said attenders are consumers, while members are contributors. They contribute wherever they can put in. They 
because that's what makes us great is when everybody gets involved and puts puts their value in. We become a highly valuable local assembly in the kingdom of God that is valuable to the Lord. Attenders want the benefits of a church without sharing their responsibility. Members put church at the center of their lives. And then I thought this was this was one of the things that he said that was that made a lot of sense to me and I think maybe will resonate with you and you'll you'll understand in the light of the current generation and the world that we live in the difference here attenders are like couples who want to live together without committing to a marriage while members wholeheartedly say I do you got a lot of people shacking up today because they want an easy out if things get rough. While the folks that walk down the aisle or at least stand in front of witnesses and say, I commit to putting myself into the, this relationship and I am there for good or for worse. For better or worse, for for the good or bad, or the sunshine or the rain. That's what members do in the kingdom of God. And you have done that. Most of you have done that. And have been faithful even with the doors closed. And and I feel like it's because many of you you've just you've got that walk with God that is a seven day walk with God, not a one day a week walk with God. And that is crucial. That is important. And let me tell you, let me tell you another reason that it is crucial and important and is of such great value is because Jesus talked about there coming a day when no man can work. And he's talking about kingdom work. It's coming a day. He said, work while it is day. And I believe he's talking about now. And this is some Matthew 24 terminology work while it is day work while you can work while while things are well enough that you're not shut down because there is coming a day I believe before the Lord comes where we will as many nations right now they're not allowed to assemble legally but the church is doing well because the church is not a building We've got nations where the church is, is an underground church. It's because they serve God in their homes. They serve God in the basement where nobody can hear them worship and pray. They, they get together in little meetings, kind of like home groups, and that's how they flourish. It's one of the reasons we believe that really now is the time to do our home group ministry and several of our men have have felt the burden of this and I have and, and years ago I, I knew this would be a direction we would eventually go we 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 talked about this 20 years ago about home ministry and home groups and we saw churches that were flourishing even then using that type of ministry and and I'm telling you there's coming a day when it may be the only type of gathering we can do. And we need each other. And so we are we are working our way toward that type of ministry so that someday we'll be prepared when they try to close our doors for good, which I believe they eventually will. Maybe not in America. Maybe, maybe our freedoms will be maintained, and I pray that they are. As long as folks are willing to fight for them, we will have our freedoms. But in this present world, a lot of freedom is going by the wayside. It's one of the fears I have. And I, and I, I say fear, I use that term lightly because I don't live in fear. But it's one of the concerns I have in looking at a lot of the socialistic tendencies that we are leaning toward even in this country. Because when you start heading toward the socialistic communist type of government, Freedoms disappear. 
and we don't want to we don't want to see that happen but the church the church is you you are the church you are a part of the body you are a member of the body whether we have a building or a roof over our head or not and your prayers and some of you have discovered I'm so excited about some of the some of the things that I've heard some of your prayers that are being answered prayers are are effective in or outside of the house of God they're effective in your home they're effective on your job they're effective in your car they're effective in prayer is effective God hears prayers it doesn't matter where you're at and so you can be an effective member of the church of the living God without even being inside the building now thank God we're fixing to be able to be back inside the building and I'm excited about that I'm thrilled that we're gonna be able to do this and gather together again worship together again and do all of this but you are the church inside or out that's why you're the church whether even when you're sick and you're at home you, you don't all of a sudden because you're not like if you if you end up with some kind of flu, some kind of sickness, some kind of disease, you're not able to be in the house of God on a Sunday, doesn't mean you're backslid. You might feel like you're you know distant but you're not. Feelings, it's not about the feelings here. It's about being born again. It's about being part born into the kingdom of God. It's about being filled with the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, having the Holy Ghost lead and guide you. It lead, leads and guides you mostly outside of the building. Now, I know we have the gifts of the Spirit many times that operates inside the building, and I thank God for all of that. I thank God for the word of prophecy, the gift of tongues, interpretation, the, the gift of faith, and the working of miracles, and, and all of these gifts that God has put in the church and put in the believers. But they work outside the building. They're not limited to the building. And we're thankful for all of that. We're thankful for the building. We're thankful for you inside or out. We're thankful for the fact that God is with us and lives in us and not necessarily in the building. But we're thrilled about all of that. We're looking forward to this. Listen, you'll, you'll get a little more information as we move along here, I'm sure. Uh, that Brother Joshua Tipton will be sending out some instructions uh, as we move towards Sunday and Pentecost Sunday. We're looking forward to having Bobby Wade here. I know he's going to bring a word from the Lord to us. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be exciting. Bring somebody with you that needs the Holy Ghost. Bring somebody with you that needs the Holy Ghost, that needs some hope, needs some uplifting, that needs heal. Bring somebody with you, and we will see what the Lord will do for us this coming Sunday morning at 11. I am so pumped and excited about what God is fixing to do in our midst. We're excited about it. We're, we're looking forward to it. We're working toward it having a safe and a wonderful and a joyful and a powerful time together. And we look forward to being with you again and seeing you here. And uh, very soon on the inside, first Sunday of June, we plan on being back inside the building. And, and phase one of our, I think we have four phases that we have set up and, and laid out for getting back to some semblance of normal inside the building. But for now, uh, Wednesday nights will continue to be online. I keep repeating this because I want you to get this. A lot of folks miss these things when we talk about them. We get phone calls about, what, what was it you said? So we're trying to re-hit you. It's just like announcements on Sunday that you all don't typically listen to. So I'm giving it to you again. Wednesday nights are going to continue online. This Sunday, we plan on being outside Pentecost Sunday with Bobby Wade. Already talked to my friend Steve Pappas. And uh, he's looking forward to come over and helping us get set up. Uh, then the following Sunday, the June 7th, uh, we are looking at being inside the building. June 14th, uh, we are going to have uh, Brother Tim Green. I believe his wife is also coming. And uh, they will be with us on June 14th inside the building. And then I think... Uh, uh, right around June 14th, we're looking at Phase 2. We will talk to you about Phase 2 and what we plan on doing there. 
we may be uh, getting to open up some actual get-togethers uh, in small group settings in some of our ministries at that point. But we'll talk to you about that. Uh, but anyway, God bless you. It's been good to be with you. I love and appreciate you. You are the church. You are the church of the living God. God bless you. Now,